Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 for the first part of this week's update from the uh, from the last stream. And my big achievement in the last stream was getting the um, Astro 4 science nearly working. It's not quite finished, but it's pretty close. I'm mostly waiting for some other resources to be made available. As usual, Astro 4 requires four types of data cards to be fed in in order to have it, have it up and running. And here you can see we've got the dark energy data, micro black holes, zero point energy data, and asteroid probe data, plus of course all the th thermofluids which are being just fed in from pipes across here as usual. And so those are, um, well as you can see, we've got a nice healthy supply of two of them, but the other two are not up and running yet. And mostly, Astro 4 is strangely easy. So, for example, down here we've got the, um, the dark energy data. All that requires is astrometric data and negative pressure data. The astrometric data we've been making in huge quantities way up here uh, with these... The, these machines here. And the way these ones work is they'll take in all of the different telescope data. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them going in. And then we're on the tier, th the third tier of this recipe where for every every time you take in seven of these and you also bring in 13 blank data cards, you produce 20 astrometric data. There are earlier tiers, as I've talked about in the past, where you take in um, smaller numbers of cards but produce much smaller quantities of the astrometric data. So this one is far more efficient in that you bring in, you bring in seven cards and you're producing almost at a rate of one to of, of three to one, so three astrometric data for every um, observation data you bring in. Well, almost. I think the tier two was two, two to one, and the tier one was about one to one. So yeah, this one's great. And as we start churning through them, we'll, we'll be producing them up here in in what in the quantities as appropriate. So that's, that should work very very nicely. And so yeah, down here we're we're, we're, make, we're building up all the all those um, all those data cards, and then I've got the standard f filtering system here that's pulling out the data cards we actually want onto the belt here, and then the the junk data cards and the blank data cards can be put onto this belt and taken away to to go up the recycling belt to go off to the recycling facilities and be well recycled, funnily enough. And then the other thing you need to make in these is is, is the uh, negative pressure data, and that's being produced up here by these machines. Now at the moment. I'm not sure these are going to be able to keep up once we get the system running at full speed, but for the time being, they are um, they are they're sufficient just to make sure that everything is is working and plugged in in the right place. And I can come back later and check the numbers on all of these later once I when I'm, when I'm ready for that. But as well as dropping them down for this data and sending them up to be made into the catalogs up here, we're also now splitting them off and bringing them down this way to be t to be turned into the later data cards. So for some reason, negative pressure data seems to be in extremely high demand for a lot of different things. Um, as I say, there's there's here where we're turning it into dark matter data, there's the catalogues, and then the ones down here as well, which is interesting, but I mean, it's, it's not a problem because we know how to make these. As long as we have enough of these um, beryllium, uh, space, uh, beryllium aeroframe scaffolds coming in, then this will be absolutely fine. So those are poured down here into these machines. They're also then being poured over here into these laser facilities, which are producing the, uh, the zero-point energy data. And we've got this traditional sort of loopback thing where some of them will be, uh, some of them will return to the system down here. And so we've got a, a splitter with a priority input on the top here that will pass them through to be to be reused. And also, as usual, we're producing junk data cards, which can be recycled through here, as as I mentioned before. And the actual data cards that we want that are then being passed up here and going into the in, into making the catalogs. The third part of this is these micro black hole datas. Um, and these apparently I, I seem to have not actually quite done the pipe work correctly. Yes, okay, so over here, in theory it's sort of nearly working, but I just need to fit, finish off the pipe work. We've got a train that's come in here and now, now doesn't have anywhere to go back to get some more of the um, of the particle stream. But we are basically full over here. This this is set up wrongly. This should actually be watching for a particle stream of, um, of, of uh, less than 100,000 before it turns the station on. So we shouldn't have quite so much in here, but... Um, well, oops. And also I'll need to um, come in and uh, put in one of these pipes, but basically re redo this pipe work here so we can pass it down here. I w was previously going to fit this um, square low, no, I was going to fit this one in a square higher, but then I realised I needed to also bring in blank data cards here, because unlike all of these other ones, which are bringing in data cards with information on them already, which they can then overwrite and then pass them out through the, through the law of um, conservation of data cards, and this one again down here. It brings in one data card and outputs 40%, 40% plus, okay, 19%. It's very nearly conserving them. But there's just under 100% coming uh, coming out of a data card coming out on the other side. So that conserves them. But this one actually needs some extra data cards to be brought in because it's not bringing in its own. So I do need to finish the pipe work off here. There's a, a missing pipe here. There is, and, and these two need to be joined up and just generally fixed and sorted out so it'll actually pass the uh, pa uh, particle stream through. Let's do that quickly. There, so that's now fixed, the boss will come over and do it, and so we'll have the third type of data cards now being produced here. 
The fourth type is the, is the complicated one. So all of these, these are really, really easy. They're just taking things that you've already got, a single process for each one, a little bit of filtering, yes, there's a loop back. There's nothing complicated in here. This is all stuff we've seen a million times before. It's nothing complicated. The complicated part of this is the, um, is the asteroid probe data. And that one is made rather differently. In order to make those, you need to go to, off to an asteroid belt and launch probe rockets from there. Now, you could actually do start doing all of the um, Astro 4, you could do all of the Astro science off in your um, in, in, in this asteroid belt and then ship the uh, completed uh, catalogues or science packs or whatever you want back here. But I've decided the sensible way to do it is going to be to have a spaceship that goes off with the probe rockets and the asteroid probes themselves and then do the, uh, do the science out there and then fly back and, 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 and drop off the data cards and, and send them in. So in order to do that, I've got this spaceship, which is very, very similar, you'll notice, to the uh, the other spaceships we use, the ones over here. Here's one that's actually parked in the right place. Um, but I've shrunk it down slightly, down to only having one warehouse instead of three warehouses. And that's because for this particular type of uh, data card, you only require very small network quantities of stuff, and the, and, the, and the data cards stack very, very highly. Looking in this box here, we can see that this is taking in um, a thousand blank data cards to make one asteroid belt probe. Now granted, the asteroid belt probes only stack up to a stack size of one, as do the probe rockets that are required to launch them. But so that means if we go out with 10 of those, 10 of each of those, that will fill 20 stacks and will produce 10,000 of these data cards. The data cards I believe stack to 100, so we'll take 20 stacks out and bring 100 stacks back. So these, these warehouses are actually seriously over spec for what we need. Um, but then once they, once they come back with all of the, in this case, the asteroid probe data on this one, they can dump all of that out with these inserters onto the belts that pour down here and this belt hasn't been finished, I need to do that. It was obviously in, in the middle of construction. Onto this belt here, which, because I've decided I don't need mirrors anymore for any further down, so I've borrowed this this slot in the bus. That'll bring them down here, and they'll be added onto the uh, onto the system down here. Have we got this, this, these pipe, this pipe work built up yet? We have, why are you not running? You are running, you're just very, very slow. Okay, so that'll need to be expanded too. We, met, we, we haven't even made a single... Oh, I'm passing the uh, the junk data cards around here as well. That's a, that's a bit of a fail. Okay, there's another thing to fix. So there's a few, few um, modifications needed around here before this will actually work. But anyway, getting back to what I was talking about. The idea is we'll send this spaceship off, off to an asteroid belt where there will already be a probe rocket launch system and all the other infrastructure required. So it'll land next to that. It'll unload the probe rockets and the probes themselves and those will be launched. We'll get the data cards and they'll be fed round into here. And I'll show you that working next time hopefully because at the moment it's not built, it's not finished, but that's the general idea. I've done pretty much the standard uh, spaceship con uh, configuration system here. So we've got, um, we're hooked up with this cable at the bottom to all of the, uh, to, to all of the, um, the, the resources on the ship. So so we can see how much fuel we've got in these tanks and how much resource we've got in this uh, in this warehouse up here. And the idea is that we'll then watch for there to be 10 uh, probe rockets, 10 probes and at least 39,000 ion stream to fuel the rocket. And also zero asteroid probe data as well to make sure the ship is emptied properly. And once we've got all of that stuff, we can launch the ship again. So the way we're the way we're loading the ship is by is, is by bot. I decided that whilst I'm generally not a great fan of using um, logistics bots for supplying things that are going to be produced in large or pass through in large quantities. This doesn't really count because we're only doing 10 at a time and they're really expensive. As you saw it takes a thousand uh, data cards to make each one of these. So I've got, I've now got or I will soon have a completely isolated uh, logistics network down here that will that will touch these three red chests over here and these two blue chests, but nothing else. And to achieve that, I shall remove this roboport up here once I'm convinced that all the construction around here has been done and we're not going to bring, need to bring in any more stuff from um, for, for, through the roboport network. And that will completely isolate it, so it has its own 46 uh, logistics bots and it won't, it, and, and not, it won't touch anywhere else. So I believe that should keep the thing completely safe. There is a slight risk of this spaceship occasionally stealing a logistics bot that's flying out to this one or back from this one, but I've decided that doesn't really matter because there won't be a logistics network at the other end, and so when this ship flies back again, it'll release the bot back into this network, so it should all be absolutely fine. And so this brings us on to why this ship hasn't actually launched yet. So in order to get this ship to launch, we need two things. We need probe rockets and we need asteroid probes. And these require, well, these require flat solar panels. These require holmium solenoids. And up here, well, as you can see, we don't have any uh, any flat solar panels being made because we don't have any holmium plate, and we don't have any and we don't have any holmium solenoids because they're just not being fed out here. And this is because we don't currently have enough holmium. So it's been. 
I've managed to pull all the rest of the resources in here. As you can see, we've got the uh, the beryllium uh, scaffolds, we've got the beryllium uh, bulkheads. Those are all being provided because those are required for making the asteroid probes themselves. And up here, these are one, these ones are required for making the rockets. So. Yes, sure, that's that's going reasonably well. We seem to have a bit of a shortage of rocket solid rocket fuel as well, so I'll need to look into that. But the biggest problem is that we don't have we don't have any holmium. And that's down to a supply problem, but we'll talk we'll touch on that more in um, tomorrow's video, I think. But in order to get all these supplies up here, I did some work down on Norvis. And so down here, this is the area where we're uh, filling up all of the trains that come up to Norbit and bring all the resources we need. There have been a number a number of improvements I've need I've made. Um, mostly in this sort of area down here where we've got now got a few more resources being brought in and now somebody else I think it was Tristan but I'm not 100% certain had put in a number of these stations and filled up and put in some of the belts for this but we, we still needed to have the, this these long belts to feed to feed the resources from down here to bring them all up into the um, into the actual uh, train station area itself in order to get this running I didn't have to do a huge amount of work for this particular part but I did need to tweak the numbers a little bit so we've now got a lot more holmium cables being brought up and if we had holmium uh, are you the holmium yeah, solenoids? Yes, you are. If we had the holmium solenoids here, then those would be being fed through as well. So as you can see, most of this is working. We do seem to have a, dis a disturbing shortage of the uh, rocket fuel, actually. So let's see back up here. We've got the shopping list over here by the station, and it looks like we're not re requesting remotely enough solid rocket fuel. So let's put that up to a thousand. And that'll that'll put a lot more of it into the, into the train. I'm not sure why it think. Oh, I know why. So it, there'll have been a hundred of it. But that, but then it'll have got, it'll have come up here, and now the train has been requesting a hundred. So if we look back on Norvis, there was probably already a hundred in the train. Which one are we looking at? This one. There was probably already a hundred of it in the train in total, and now we're bringing in a lot more. So uh, the extra thousand rocket fuel is going to more than fill up this train. But we can do that, and then the train will go. Oh yes, I'm full now, and it'll head off. But the prop, the main problem we're seeing here is that we don't have enough enough holmium to make all the resources we require. So as you saw, you saw that there was no there were no holmium solenoids. And if we look over here where those are supposed to be being made, again it's a shortage of holmium coming in here. And as, as I say, we'll look into that a bit more next time, but we are pretty close to uh, to being ready to st to take off and start going off to produce the asteroid uh, the asteroid belt data. There is also asteroid field data later on in the game which I'm aware of because I've already played 0.5 and I'm, I'm trying not to talk about that because um, it's it's irrelevant at the moment and I don't want to have my spoilers. <laughs> the other thing that's required for making the uh, for doing the asteroid probe data is making the the actual probe rocket silos. So the, these things here, space probe rocket silos. And we're going to need three of those in total in the end. So we've now actually built enough because there's one in here and two in here. Uh, no, four of those in the end, sorry. So we haven't quite made enough. Uh, and these are these are simply the silos that you launch the rockets from in order to go out, build up, the, get, get the data, and come back again. And so, as I say, we're going to need four of those. One is for my asteroid belt data. One is for Tristan's solar data. So he's going to need to do basically the same thing in Kalidas orbit, which is why I built that second rocket. Much later on, we're going to need to build one in um, in in an asteroid in a deep space asteroid uh, field in order to get the, the something for deep space science. But that's later. And also, it's a good idea to build one of these in. Norvis orbit because at the moment we're getting a particular type of data one of the science packs uh, eh, let me see if I can find it yes this gold science pack here is being made from satellite telemetry so at the moment we are making the satellite telemetry by launching rockets over here here, so these satellite rockets can be launched whenever we need more uh, satellite telemetry. And as you can see, we've got we've got a decent amount of it at the moment, but we'll churn through a lot of those science packs because every every research we do uses uses the gold science packs among among others, so the rocket tech cards. And so we need to keep launching these. And you have two choices: you can either launch them from the ground, in which case you need to pull in. Um, I think it's something like it's basically it's it's a hundred low density structures, hundred rocket control units, three hundred rocket fuel, and a hundred heat shield tiles. Uh, that's reduced slightly by these productivity modules. These are tier one productivity modules. That's ridiculous. These should be much higher uh, higher level. But if you move it to one of the space launch silos, then you can launch the rocket much more cheaply. I think it requires less fuel, less rocket sections. Because you're launching from space, you're already out of the planet's gravitational field, so it's much, much cheaper. So what we're going to start doing is launching the uh, rockets from up there, from one of these space silos, and then send it probably, we'll then probably send these these um, satellite telemetry data down on, the tr on one of the trains, dump them back into the system, because, assuming we're doing this properly, because yes, we have productivity modules in all of the 
these um, assembly machines. And that means, yeah, they, they run slowly, as you can see by looking at them, but these they are fast enough for our needs. And that means that we can then be much more efficient about the about the uh, the, the amount of um, st output we get from the inputs we put in, because we're still going to need these speed modules. We're still going to need what are those are those yeah we're still going to need electric furnaces, and we're still going to need the blank tech cards. So it's very worth the tiny tiny amount of um, of elevator cable that we're going to use up in order to bring all those in order to bring all the um, the satellite telemetry data down and put it into these machines down here. So we don't need to change this area. We could beacon it if we needed more production. We don't need more production, so there's no point. So we're just going we're probably just going to leave that alone. I suppose technically we could actually upgrade to the um, the tier four assembly machines, of which I don't have any around, but they're being built over here. Over here, that might get us more slots for. Um, Productivity modules? I'm not quite sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. It would certainly get us more speed and would, wouldn't require quite as many, but I'm not sure that's worth it. That's going to be another thing I'm probably going to do next week while I'm waiting for Tristan to get the Holmium up and flowing at a nice rate. Because if we can get these being produced slightly more efficiently, then it just saves resources. It, it, it makes everything that little bit cheaper, and I think that's probably worth doing. The other science-related thing that has been undone is that Mark has now got Biological Science 3 up and running. So this has required quite a lot of... Um, infrastructure and build up towards it because this requires lots and lots of different uh, Vitamland products. So he's moved on from from, um, from Bio 2 and Bio 1 and they, they're all, they all follow fairly similar patterns. So Biological 1 you need to make these um, green bio samples and then do things to them such as um, burning them and squashing them. So that's burning them, that's squashing them, what's this one doing? Uh, dissolving them in chemical goo and that makes Bioscience 1. And then you make the purple bio samples and you squish them, burn them and dissolve them again. So that's Bioscience 2. And this one requires vitalic acid, so it's a bit more complicated. You need to bring that in from, um, from, from, from uh, your, your Vita planet or make it on site. Then for tier 3, well, you guessed it, you make the blue bio samples and then you, what, what are we doing here? We're irradi irradiating them this time and probably squishing, oh, no, we're unsquishing them this time, we're stretching them um, and zapping them and freezing them. So, okay, it, it's slightly different, but it's the same sort of idea in that for the first one, you, you make the first type of biosample, you, you, you destroy it in various different ways, and that gives you data. Then you make the purple ones and destroy them in various ways. Then you make the blue ones and destroy them in various ways. And then and, and all of that produces, as usual, it produces the four different types of data cards, and that allows you to then produce your uh, your catalogues, which can then be fed out onto a belt here, and taken off to be to be scienced up over on the other side, as you've seen before. But we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a bit. So, I, I, and I say this in a, in a, in a, I, I, I've just, it occurs to me that the way I phrase that makes it sound slightly dismissive, as in, well, you just do the same things you did again, but with a different colour of biosample. It, it is a little bit harder than that, because each time it gets harder to make the biosamples, and the resources you need in order to do the, uh, the various different steps get a little bit more complicated as well. So I remember from when I did it in 0.5, this one, I, I remember the, um, the neural gel being fairly difficult to do, um, and this one seems to take it takes in nutrient gel and it takes in it takes in tier one biomasses and then you squish and then that turns into the neural gel that you need later on. It also produces a load of bio sludge as a byproduct and that seems to be being taken away relatively slowly. So perhaps we're going to need um, an improved disposal system for that. So yeah, all of these pipes are very very full. And Mark in theory has a recycling facility down here that will take in the bio sludge and turn it back into the nutrient gel that is needed for all these things. But it looks like the um, the ratios have been thrown off a bit. So, so maybe he just needs to put in some big tanks to st store a buffer of the of the bio sludge. Or maybe there are many other things. That maybe maybe he's made too much of it. Maybe he's. It seems to be a little bit of a problem. There's a bit too much of it at the moment. So. Um, it need, we, we need, I think we need. I think we probably just need some big tanks in to buffer it. And there's, just, oh, there there are already some big tanks to buffer it, but they're not buffering quite enough. So this bio sludge pipe is not full. I see. So the bio sludge, this this pump is pumping it out into the rest of the network, rather than bringing it down into here so it can be used up. So we could for now. I mean, I could flip that pump round and it would suck it all back out again. But I think that's not going to be. I don't think that's going to work because I think there are things up here that require us as well, and therefore pulling it all out of there and back down into this area and turning it all into nutrient gel. I don't think that's going to work. So I think maybe he's going, it's going to be like my uh, stone and sand system on Talos, where he's going to need to have two separate pipes pipes along here, one for taking it away from places that are producing it, and then one that brings it back out again uh, for places that actually need it. However, we can now see that these tanks will well, these tanks will start to fill up a little bit here, and then we'll see that up here we'll probably see that this magically starts to work again. Um, yeah, so there we go. Now we have a now we have a plentiful supply of neural gel. So, so um, yeah, perhaps it wasn't too much of a problem before, but I think that's going to need he's going to need to take a look at that. So um, I'll alert him to that, and we'll we'll see what happens. 
So that nutrient gel is being brought out over here and then back in over here. So there's quite a lot of piping just to bring it from here to here. But this makes sense. This is, this is how bus systems work. You, t you have the pipes over here so that when it's needed somewhere else as well. So when he needs it for Bio 4, he can just whack in some long, 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 long pipes along here to get it to, to get it to where it's needed. So this is this is perfectly sensible. It just looks a little bit silly at the moment while there's only one thing that requires it. But from that, he can then bring in... Um, he now needs the Vitalic Reagent. And apparently this was quite a... It was an effort to get enough of it into, into place. And so he can then bring all of that into here, and that's making the uh, the blue uh, biosamples, but that needs the um, the purple biosamples, which are currently not being made in large enough quantities down here because, I don't know, okay, we're short of experimental bioculture because we're short of vitamin lange extract. So it looks like all of this is sort of feeding back to being a, shortage, a, a logistical problem of bringing in enough of all of the bio stuff. So if we can upgrade his uh, spaceships a bit and get that flowing slightly more healthily, then I think this is going to work better. And I believe that is what he's currently working on. And so, like I've, like I've said with a lot of my, um, a lot of the builds that I've done and other people have done, this is a sort of a it's a work in progress. You've got the system here that is capable of producing the uh, the, 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 the catalogs. You can see them coming out here at, a, at, at a, a, a rate but it's not quite running flat out because there is a bit of a shortage of some of the inputs. So you build this stage and then you go, okay, my logistics aren't strong enough. I need to upgrade some some of the logistics systems in order to bring out all the stuff we need there. But then once he started making the uh, the blue biosamples, you can see there, there is a bit of a backlog on this belt up here. But you can then start doing doing things with them. And actually this one only uses the green biomasses. So we can so we can then make the radiation data out of those. Yes, it produces some dirty uh, bio sludge and, 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 and you've got the recycling of the uranium as well to, to worry about. But I think... Oh yes, he's got he's got loopbacks here for the uranium. This this is quite neat. And actually, I should probably have stolen this idea for the um, for the ones I, I made for the Astro Four. Um, that said, uh, the way I've done it will also work. It doesn't really matter. But so he's got the uranium being passed out here and straight back in again. And because I've mentioned this before, but I'll say it again in case you haven't seen that episode, uh, loaders will carry on loading up until the 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 system is com the, the machine is completely full as up to as much as you can cram in by hand. Whereas an inserter will only load in as much as the machine will take to you do about I think it's about three builds or a certain amount of times worth of builds. So this will will be always be able to load in even if you've got an inserter filling up as much as possible. So this essentially this has prior priority. So the uh, the ones that are fed out and back in again will be used by priority, but when you start to run a little bit low, the inserter can always put another one in. Up here we are trying to use, oh okay, this one despite being um, Bio 3, I'm looking, yes, despite looking at Bio 3, here we are using purple, so tier 2 bio samples, which is the ones we're short of, and that's why we don't have any decompression data coming through. But again, you bring in a biomass and a data card, you get your data card back out and you get some sludge because you've squished the biomass. Uh, they're, they're all fairly similar. That, that's a relatively easy one. Then up here, these two both take the new blue blue biomasses. And then in here, we're also requiring some ion stream to, to irradiate it and data cards as well, of course. And then up here, we're bringing in uh, thermofluid in order to freeze freeze it because cryogenic, and then we can feed out the warm thermofluid for, uh, for to be rechilled again. So they're all they're all following fairly familiar systems. It's just they they started we're starting to need some of the more advanced um, products to make the uh, to make the intermediates that you need in order to make it. So here we've got the uh, the what are, what even are these things called? Um, vitalic reagent is, is required for this step. The advanced biosamples are required for this step, and and uh, and so yeah, it, it, those those things make it a little bit harder. But once you've got all your data cards, you feed them in here, a bit of cooling for the computers, and you get the the um, the bio the uh, the bio data coming out here, where it can then flow down the belt of doom all the way down to here. It gets put into the train in the usual way. We, we once you've got once you've got a full row of it, the train can then head off from here over to the science park where it will unload up here, your tier 3 bio ca catalogs come out along here and flow along here where they can then we can then start making them in, we can start making the um, the insights the, the, with the more efficient recipe because we move this one up to tier 3 and then up here you can feed the tier 3 ones in here along with the other um, intermediate they require which is again is the uh, the vitalic reagent and that allows you to make the tier 3 bio uh, bio catalogs now this isn't isn't running and I'm not sure why not why are you sad Oh, we don't have enough Bio 2 packs being made, and we don't have enough two Bio 2 packs, we don't have Bio 1s, and we don't have the Bio 1s because we've run out of Vitamin Lange Extract. So again, it's the Vita products that are being brought over that we've got the shortage of. Oh yes, and these ones are being brought over, I remember, by these ludicrous Mark belts um, that are running from all the way over on the other side of the known universe, as far as I can tell. Um, train. 
Yeah, so these are being brought along all these incredibly long belts that come from over here. And this was because initially Mark was bringing these things in by um, by, by rocket, which is a bit dirty, and we don't approve of that. But um, it was it was it was what he was doing at the time. Now we have spaceships coming in, and I believe that Mark's spaceship is a bit more complicated than the rest of them. Um, as you can see here, by the unloading system, so the spaceship comes in, lands here, unloads, uh, we've got all of these different products being brought over from uh, Big Rid in the spaceship. So we've got a supply of Vitamalange Spice and Vitamalange Extract and Vitamalange Reagent and Bio Scrubbers and, and, and Vitalic Acid Barrels all being brought in by the... Uh, by the uh, by the spaceship, dumped into here. They'll go up, they'll be sorted along here. And this is to make sure that you always keep even, reasonably even amounts of all of the things in here so that they can then be loaded into the train and the train can take them off. Now it looks like that train what has, has been set up to, to, to go on inactivity at both ends. So it will unload as quickly as it can and then unload as quickly as it can. And this end. And I, don't, I don't like that. That just means the train is running backwards and forwards endlessly. And it'll load up as much as it can, it'll unload as much as it can, but if there's no demand, it'll just run back and forth all the time. And if there's no supply, it'll run back and forth all the time, as it is at the moment. Uh, so, not a huge fan of that way of setting it up. But I guess that's because there's a bit of a shortage of a lot of the things it's supposed to be carrying at the moment. So, going back up the uh, chain even further, we get we end up we find ourselves on Big Rid, and over here we have um, again we have a train that is taking lots and lots of different things, and there will presumably be yes, there is a, a system here that is watching how much of each of these things that, that is is needed. Presumably watching a signal that's coming down from space where we're saying we currently have 18,000 Vitamalange uh, spice and minus 1.1 thousand Vitalic reagents. So yes, that's why the reagents are flowing through here because there is currently a request from space to keep everything roughly balanced to about the amount we want. Um, so if we look up in Big Red Orbit, we'll see that we're watching the uh, contents of all of these warehouses and presumably then transmitting it down to down to the ground or maybe it's watching actually right from the all, all the way over on the other end from in Norvis uh, let's have a look back down on on Big Red again i am currently trying to puzzle out how Mark has done this. So you can uh, you can watch my thought process, which I'm sure will be very, very exciting. Yes, yeah, so this is receiving a signal from the um, bio setup in Norbit, which is asking for the various things that are required. And at the moment, that seems to mostly just be a quantity of the dark green bottles that are being passed into here uh, and then, then put into the train and taken up. So it's, it's watching how many are in here, but then when the train picks them up and takes them away, I think it's going to lose track of how many there are. Um, unless, let's have a look up back up in Big Red Orbit. We've got a transmitter here, which is sending space, which is spaceport to Big Red. That's all very strange. So the way these things normally work is you have this transmitter over here will be, yeah, here we go. This is requesting all of the things we need. At the moment, it's requesting a little bit more elevator cable and a lot more vulcanite. That's fine. Um, and then, but then we, yeah, we're not transmitting down what we've actually got in the spaceship, what's in transit, any of that sort of stuff. So we're going to end up with some weird numbers with this system. I mean, it'll probably basically work. Because if you request stuff on, if you request stuff down on Big Red and it gets passed through, and then it's in the in the in the spaceship, so it's on its way over, then you'll just get a, a twice as much as you need. And as long as you can cope with having twice as much as you need at the other end, then everything will be absolutely fine. And I think there probably is going to be enough storage space for that. But it's still a, it's it's a rather odd way of doing it. Personally, I'd have done it in in more stages. So I'd have had probably a store a store pile of each of the bio things up here, and I'd have sent the train up to make sure that was kept at a certain level, and then have that ship out the amounts that are required to keep the other end at a certain level and yeah, it's all it's all a bit fiddly sending it out like this but um the, the, the theory is that you're going to be sending out just the quantity you want you require of each of these vita products to the other end and so it should keep everything reasonably balanced and under control i guess um basically it's all a bit fiddly uh, hopefully uh, Mark knows what he's doing. I'm, I'm sure, no, I, I, I'm sure Mark knows what he's doing, but it's just a bit, it, it's a little bit of an odd way of doing things in order to get all the resources in, in uh, transported in the same, at the same time. But there is a very good reason he's doing it like this. Um, so with other, other resources, you've, you've seen how we've done, for example, the, um, the beryllium. And I pick the beryllium simply because it's the one I'm most familiar with because I set it up. We're shipping out the beryllium ingots by train over to to the spaceship and then over to Norbit, Norbit, and then from Norbit they're being dropped down to Norvis, and then on Norvis we're converting them into the intermediate products, so the uh, the sticks, the uh, the uh, scaffolds, the the uh, and, and the, the bulkheads, and I suppose the low density structures, kind of. And the reason we're doing this this over here is because it requires lots of other resources. So we require cryonite, we require steel, uh, iron, sorry, uh, we require imasite, 
and I think that's it. But we, yeah, as, as I say, we require these other resources in order to make the make these intermediates and low density structures, which means we therefore require glass and steel. So we don't want to be doing that. We don't want to do all of these out on Talos because then we'd have to ship all of these extra resources in there. However, the biological stuff doesn't require as much reprocessing. So you've got the sort of the this this one here, the the processed vitamin. What's what's this one? Which one is this? You've got the vitamin spice and the vitamin extract. Okay, that requires vulcanite, but vulcanite isn't too difficult to bring in because we've got that set up on the spaceship system. And then over here, you require uh, light oil, which can be made from the core fragments or by digging up oil on this planet. Is that where he's getting it from? I'm not honestly not sure. Oops, I misread that. We are producing light oil, not using up light oil. That's even easier. There's no, so to make to make the uh, the vitamin lange extract, you don't need any other inputs. Then we have some of the funny business. So these uh, these dark these dark green bottles, as we seem to, seem to be calling them. Okay, these actually do require glass and lithium chloride and vulcanite. But vulcanite we've already got, and that's fairly easy. These two glass is fairly straightforward because it's just made from stone, and you get a lot of stone out of the um, core processing. So that's that's fine. That's not an issue. And lithium chloride is just made also just made from sand and and water. So again, that's 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 another one you can just do on site. So we don't need any any additional um, inputs for that. So we can we can make all of this on site. We don't we only so far we've only needed to bring in the um, the vulcanite. Vitalic acid is perhaps a bit more complicated. Um, let's have a look at this one. So making the vitalic acid requires nitric acid, which requires mineral water, ammonia, and rare metals. You get some rare metals from the uh, from, from the core mining, but most of this seems to be coming in by, well, it was coming, it's coming in by delivery cannon. Um, but I think we can start shipping that in by spaceship. This might be starting to get to the point where it uh, it, it disproves my point, um, because it, this is somewhat more complicated. Here, okay, it's water and electricity and atmospheric gases and so on, but we are needing to bring in the rare metals. We're apparently bringing in glass and steel and coal as well, and those are required to make these um, the bio scrubbers over here. So, yeah, okay, at this point, it started to get a little bit further away from the ideal of saying, well, we'll just do, we, we, we'll do the things that don't require too much extra input, um, because it does require some extra input. But the reason we're doing this over here is because of the sheer quantities required. Uh, we are then taking this away and barreling it up in order to ship it out, which is a little bit weird. Maybe we should be using a tank, maybe we shouldn't, I don't know. But we are currently barreling it. But a large part of the reason we've done all of this locally is because of the quantities required. So, so when you can ship something out as an ingot, that's a very, very dense form of that substance. So shipping the ingots out makes a lot of sense. We can ship them over to Norvis. We can then turn them into the beams or the scaffolds or the bulkheads or whatever, whatever it is we need to make out of them. And it's an efficient way to transport them. Whereas these ones, the uh, when you when you start making the the vitalic acid or the or the green little green jars, it takes large quantities of the uh, of the earlier vita stages to do that. And so if we shipped it all over in as this 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 stage we'd be shipping enormous quantities of it over and still only being able to make relatively small amounts of the of the next stages of, of the, with on the other at the other end so it makes far more sense to ship them around on the planet where they can just move around on a solid belt like this then build the next stages and then ship those out because it's much they're much more dense that way so we're, we're sticking with this because yeah i'm pretty sure it makes more sense to do it that way around and to be fair, Mark has observed that more Vita product volume is going to be needed in the future. So he has actually seen all of the problems I was commenting on. Uh, so it, it, it's something he's very aware of and presumably will be working towards. But at the moment, I mean, it's an interesting and slightly weird system, but I think it is going to work. While I'm talking about science, I should also acknowledge that um, Mark has put in this uh, wide area beacon here, and this is now covering both of these um, uh, science labs, and therefore they're running a bit faster. So we can see they're now running at plus 600%, and conveniently at a productivity boost of, well, plus 95% for this one, and 87% for this one. Although actually this one's running even faster because it doesn't have the speed reduction from having the higher tier, from having that tier 9 productivity module in there. I guess that means if we find another tier 9 productivity module, we should put it in the other lab because then, because if we put it in this one, then the one that's more productive will be running slower and therefore it's less efficient, I suspect? I don't know. But at the moment, anyway, we're trying to do the anti-biter virus, anti-biter virus capsule as opposed to antivirus or anything else, uh, which we think sounds quite interesting. That that's presumably is a biological, yeah, that requires bio-3 and we just don't have enough of those at the moment. So research has paused at the moment, but when it was working, let's have a look at how, how fast we're researching things at the moment. 
So looking at the rate we've been using up, this is the Rocket Tech cards because that goes into all of the researches. Looking at the rate we've been consuming those recently, I'm not sure what caused uh, this spike here or this spike here, to be quite honest. Um, but this steady state here of about 17 science per minute or 17 tech cards per minute, the science is slightly better than that because of the productivity boost. Um, that'll have been the rate we we're running at before. Now with the new uh, beacon in there, we can now bump it up to, I think this is probably a steady state of about 58 uh, just somewhere between 58 and 60 science per minute, so it's much, much faster. Uh, we got this crazy spike up to 88. I don't know what caused these spikes. Maybe, no, I, I really don't know what could, could have caused these spikes, because this is the only thing that could, could be using them. I'm going to just call them anomalous and, and ignore them. But I think once we, have en once we have enough science packs coming in, we'll have a steady state of about this sort of level. So putting in this single wide area beacon here instead of the, uh, the, the standard basic beacon we had before has essentially quadrupled the speed we're doing research at. Now, it, hasn't, it isn't any better than putting in additional labs would have been, because it is just a speed beacon, except that it means we're getting more use out of this tier 9 productivity module in here, and also all of these tier... are these tier 7s? I think they're tier 7... A five, sorry, tier five uh, productivity modules that we put in here, and these are fairly expensive. I think at this point we could probably afford to make some tier six uh, pro productivity modules. Uh, so this one, yeah, it's just the Vitalic reagent, which is the dark green bottles that we we're talking about. So we don't we don't have very many of those, but we could probably steal a few hundred of them at some point to upgrade these um, the, the, these labs over here, and also we can nick some uh, tier, tier two bio catalogs. That's that's going to be absolutely fine. So yeah, I think I think upgrading these to tier sixes throughout would be quite a nice thing to do as soon as we can. We had some issues over here with loading up all of the uh, resources into the trains. Ooh, look at that! A, a, a train train load of um, uh, of elevator cable has just arrived. So we're, uh, we're pouring that through into all of these all of these places where they're waiting for it. So the Agnea ship has been waiting, and so has the Kothar one, and probably the, and the Snowdrop one has just arrived, and the Njord one. These have all been patiently waiting for some elevator cable to arrive, so that they can get all of the all of the supplies into them they require in order to leave. So we aren't. The elevator cable has been being produced a bit more slowly than we would like. Again, this has been due to the holmium shortage, but Tristan has been going around manually poking a few of the trains in order to get them to go to the station where we're so desperately waiting for it in order to make cables so that we can have some of this flow through and so that we can get these ships travelling again. Now, we can tell them to head off manually if we want to, and... That, that is, is sometimes seems like a good idea because when, when we seem to be short of stuff, like we're very short of iridium at the moment, but that might well be because the ship isn't flying back and forth enough. And maybe maybe the same is true for Njord, where the Holmium is coming from. There are there are problems basically. We, we need to, we need to get the, we need to get the um, Holmium sorted so we can get enough cables coming through. And oh, there we go. We've used them all up already, and none of the ships have departed. That's a bit disappointing. Uh, we need to get everything running so that we can get everything running basically. So there is a certain amount of dispatching ships manually just to force them to go. But we did have a temporary problem at one point where we had so much sulphur filling up this warehouse and this warehouse down here that the whole system ground to a halt. And we've now got so we've now got an extra warehouse here to store the sulphur. The problem is sulphur is extremely voluminous. It only stacks up to 50. And we get through it, as you saw, Talos gets through it in massive quantities. So when we need to order several thousand of it, 4.3 thousand, that's a lot of stacks of sulphur. Um, and a lot more to be stored over here as well. We need we needed extra storage space to keep all of the sulphur, basically. It's as simple as that. Speaking of moving things around a bit, so another thing I've done recently in the, in the last stream was taking the, the, the iridium girds that were being brought to here, I've got them now being brought up along the belts along here and being put into the uh, into the train that goes up to the space bus. And that means that up in Norbit, we've now got a healthy supply of the girders here. I've put in an additional belt along here that brings them along to the, uh, to the column of making all of the things. Because previously, we were assembling these on site. Uh, I forget exactly where. I think it, was, it might have been somewhere around here. I don't remember. But we were assembling them on site from iridium and vulcanite. And that's inefficient because we can't use productivity modules up here so bringing them up from the ground is much better as you can see we're getting through quite a lot of them for making all of these buildings uh, that also makes them available for anywhere anywhere else on the bus that needs them and so um, but also I've got now got the um, the iridium being brought over by train from where the spaceship lands to over here so the iridium ingots are being brought down here and put into in, into the bus so they're no longer being brought trying to trying to be brought in by delivery cannon those are then being passed along here and we're still making the iridium ingots on site um, here because you can't prod mod those even on the ground so this is a good a place as any to do it and transporting stuff around as ingots is more efficient because the ingots are more compact. Finally, I had a bit of a think about the um, about the elevator cable, um, because we're using quite a lot of that, uh, and we're also making quite a lot of it as well. So, we, as you can see, over the last the last 10 hours, we've had 
this, we had a steady state of construction here. This was when we were making it up in space, and it was woefully inefficient. But it was, we'd cobbled together stuff in one place, and it, it was working. So we sort of we went along with it. Then the machines on the ground kicked in. We started making it at a crazy rate, and then we ran out of probably holmium, uh, maybe iridium, who knows? And so it stopped. And then we had a little spike of it, another little spike of it. And now, we're at, for the last um, six minutes, apparently, we've been making it at a nice steady rate of 175 per minute. And that's very, very good. That's, that's the rate we can make it at as long as we have a supply of all of the ingredients. And as you can see along here, we're using it up at a... At a rate that averages out at about 25 per minute. So we are making it, as long as we have the supplies, we are capable of making it much, much faster than we're using it. And this is a really good thing because we don't want our elevators to fall apart because they are the, now the backbone of our entire economy, our entire logistics system. And so making these at a nice, steady, fast rate that is much, much higher than the consumption rate is very, very important. And and it's working. We just need to make sure that we fill up all the buffers, we get get all of the cables out to all of the, all of the space stations around all of the planets that we need, and I think we're going to be absolutely fine. We can make a lot more um, space elevators before we start to have any problems. And so that brings me to the end of everything I want to talk about today. I will of course be back tomorrow with the other half of this video where I shall talk about lots of the other things. There are lots of outposts and byproducts and nonsense and we've discovered in a very new and exciting place which I shall show you about, show you all about next time and, uh, and talk about as much as I can. So that's tomorrow. On Sunday, there will be an extra stream as well, an extra Factorio stream, where I should be playing Warptorio with um, with any of my supporters who would like to come along and join in. Warptorio is another Factorio mod where the biters are intended to be insurmountable, but also very, very weak to start with. And when it gets to the point where you think you can't deal with the biters anymore, you can make a certain part of the, your, your base teleport off to somewhere else uh, where the biters are once again weak. So you, you get a sort of series of, um, of start overs where you lose all of the, a lot of the stuff you've built, but you also lose a lot of the threat so that should be quite good fun and I'm going to be playing that with their channel supporters so if you um, if you'd like to join in um, please make, make sure you're a channel supporter so that means subs a, a twitch subscriber a YouTube member or someone who's made a donation on Ko-Fi and to be honest the third of those making the don donations through Ko-Fi is the best one from my point of view because um, I get the largest percentage of the money you donate basically <laughs> so that, that's that'd be a good way and make sure you're on the discord as well because that's where the invitations will come through I will be streaming it as well though so if you're not a supporter you'll still be able to watch what watch what's going on and see see how see everything happening as as it uh, as it occurs then on Monday we will be carrying on with the uh, with the stream as usual. We should be building up more of well everything, fixing all of the problems I've been talking about in this video and in tomorrow's video, and just generally trying to get everything up and going and working nicely. On Wednesday I'll be back for another XCOM stream, and as usual I'm recording this before last week's stream. So whilst things have been going quite well previously, uh, there may have been an absolute calamity in the last one. So maybe check out that stream, see how it's gone, and um, well, we'll and I'll be back on Wednesday for another one. So come along to that too. Friday and Saturday I will of course be releasing the uh, standard videos as, as usual to, to give you a, a catch up of how, how things have been going. The week after next, everything is going to be turned on its head a little bit because I'm unfortunately I'm going to have to change the streaming schedule. So as a as an, a sort of bit of an apology and a bonus for that, we're going to be having two streams. So there'll be a stream on the Monday as usual, and then a, a Factorio stream on the way, on the Thursday of that week to shift over to the new schedule. There will also be a uh, XCOM stream that will either be Tuesday or Wednesday. We shall see uh, a, a little bit closer to the time, and then the uh, the um, the videos will be all be shuffled around a bit as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that because things are going to be changing a bit, but we. We'll carry on doing the A Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 stream every week on a Thursday, and after that, the XCOM streams will all be on a Tuesday. So please make sure you uh, you come along to those. I hope those are uh, equally convenient dates for you, and uh, that I shall see you then. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.